Hello, I'm Michael Louie. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. In this video, we'll look at uh, ethical issues that arise in engineering research. When we think about ethics in research, we think of research misconduct or things that uh, go badly wrong. Uh, bad practices such as fabrication or creating research data illegitimately. Falsification, which is altering that data in inappropriate ways such as throwing out outliers without good reason or massaging the data so that it looks, uh, it fits our theory or our, our preconceived notion of what might happen. And finally, plagiarism, which is uh, presenting the words and ideas of others without proper attribution. We know plagiarism is wrong because it's uh, misrepresentation of the ideas of others and it's also theft of other people's work. But uh, much more common than fabrication or falsification are errors and negligence. And uh, those also entail ethical obligations to correct the uh, research record. As we know, uh, research results in publications, and there are many ethical issues in publication practices. So first, who gets to be an author? Um, who can be an author of a report or article? Uh, in engineering research, usually there are multiple authors. And uh, in every discipline, we must make significant, int uh, we must decide who gets to be an author when there are many people who participate in a, a research project. Um, the standard test is that uh, the, an author must be somebody who's made a significant intellectual contribution, but what counts as significant or substantive? Uh, the International Committee of Medical Journal Editors has uh, enunciated a policy that's pretty widespread among most disciplines. Authorship credit should be based on, one, substantial contributions to conception and design, acquisition of data, or analysis and, and interpretation of data. Second, uh, drafting of the article or revising it critically uh, for important intellectual content. And third, final approval of the version to be published. And authors should meet all three of these conditions. Um, in most engineering disciplines, uh, the authorship order does matter. The first author is the person who did the most work, and uh, then other authors follow in, in uh, decreasing order of contributions. Um, the first author posi position is considered the most desirable because most people remember just the first author of the paper. In mathematical disciplines, however, uh, such as some aspects of mechanics, theoretical mechanics, the uh, author order of authors is alphabetical because it's hard to ta say who did more work than another. Um, and that's very good if you work in a mathematical or computational discipline and your name, last name begins with A or B, then you'll probably be first author. Authorship is a matter of ethics because it's responsibility for the results. If something is wrong, if a published article has a mistake, who should be held accountable? I once read a book in which uh, the preface said that each of the four authors says that any mistakes are the fault of the other three. But of course, co-authorship should not be an excuse to avoid responsibility. Um, we should, uh, if, uh, we should, of course, also as authors credit the work of other people, and uh, of but uh, of course we don't need citations for every well-known fact, theory, or principle. We don't need to cite Newton's Principia Mathematica for force equals mass times acceleration. So generally we don't need to cite those well-known facts, theories, or principles. But of course the question is what counts as something that's well-known? After an article is submitted, when an article is submitted for publication, it undergoes peer review. That is reviewed by three experts, uh, typically three for engineering journals, experts in the subject of the article. So the peer reviewer or referee has certain obligations. Uh, of course, the uh, reviewer should be competent in the subject of the manuscript. The report should be thorough and prompt. Um, the report should be fair. The uh, reviewer should disregard the reputations of the, of the authors. Uh, should consider unorthodox methods and conclusions fairly. Uh, should disagree, disagree collegiality, collegially. The reviewer should probably avoid conflicts of interest uh, that could be perceived as unfair. Um, the reviewer should uh, uh, suggest improvements, additional references, alternative in interpretations of results, uh, even expository improvements. Um, various aspects of the uh, process are confidential. So the identity of the referee is confidential. That is, the authors don't know who the referees or reviewers are. Uh, the contents of the manuscript are also supposed to be considered confidential. That is, the reviewer is not supposed to take unfair um, advantage of those ideas. It's supposed to be confidential until publication. Um, <coughs> the uh, identities of the reviewers are hidden uh, or kept confidential from the authors so that the editors uh, who are handling the submissions of the 
transcript of the manuscript, can expect that the reviewers will be candid and w about the weaknesses of the manuscript. In some disciplines outside science and engineering, reviewing is so-called double-blind. That means the reviewers don't even know the names of the authors. Double-blind reviewing prevents uh, uh, the reputations for of the authors from affecting the reviewer's judgments, but al it also impedes a reviewer from noticing a potential conflict of interest. And also in many uh, science and engineering specialties, um, it's fairly easy to f uh, for uh, somebody to figure out who the authors are anyway because uh, people tend to cite their own work and uh, the fields are s usually sufficiently small that, uh, that it's not too hard to figure out who the author might be even if, or at least the senior author might be even if that's not revealed. Sometimes in the review process, a professor uh, gives a manu delegates the review um, task to a graduate student. And um, this is generally considered acceptable, provided that the professor obtains the permission of the journal editor and justifies the student's competence to serve as a reviewer. The editor should also consent to a change of reviewers, because there might be a particular reason why the reviewer chose the professor as the, uh, the why the editor chose the professor as that particular reviewer. The editor might also ask the professor and student to serve as joint reviewers of that manuscript. There are also questions about data management um, that arise in engineering research or any experimental research. One is ownership. Uh, who owns the data that have been collected? Generally, uh, the federal government, uh, when it supports research, expects that data and results of research should be used for the public good. On the other hand, when a, uh, an engineering research project is sponsored by industry, the industrial sponsor may impose limits uh, on uh, how widely the data can be shared. Um, uh, foundations, when they support research, may or may not allow uh, sharing. Um, what happens when researchers leave the university? Of course, they can't take the data with them. The, usually, the institution assumes uh, stewardship responsibility. The original notebooks have to remain in the laboratory. Uh, so in general, one has to work out ownership rights and responsibilities before beginning uh, the research. Data should, of course, be collected, uh, recorded, and protected to ensure its integrity. Accurate recording um, usually means for experimental research recording the data in bound laboratory notebooks on signed, dated pages. Electronic records, uh, and increasingly our data are recorded electronically or with computers, these records must be certified as not having been changed since the date of collection. Once we, uh, uh, furthermore, the data should be protected la to later confirm the findings and to establish priority for uh, possibly for analysis by other researchers as well. Laboratory notebooks should be kept in a safe place. Electronic records should be backed up on storage media. Samples must be stored properly, such as refrigeration, um, and so on. We, the data should be held for a reasonable period of time. Data can generally be shared with other researchers, um, uh, usually after some period of time when uh, uh, um, the researchers can usually withhold data for during collection and preliminary analysis and perhaps also during pa filing for patents. After publication, however, uh, researchers must generally make available all the data uh, to other researchers. And as I mentioned, these answers might change when the research is sponsored by an industrial firm which might uh, impose certain con conditions um, on the management of the data. A very good introduction to ethical issues in uh, scientific research, including engineering research, is this uh, report on being a scientist, responsible conduct and research, issued by the National Academies. That's the National Academy of Sciences, National Academy of Engineering, and Institute of Medicine. The second edition has been available since the mid-1990s, and the third edition will appear soon. In addition, the online ethics center at the National Academy of Engineering, with that uh, web address, has a large uh, collection of materials related to uh, um, ethics in research as well as ethics in engineering.